Alright guys, so I know it's been a while since I've put stuff up, but currently my Airman's Prophecy 2 has been blocked because of some of the game music. I'm trying to get in contact with the developers and see what's if, you know, these people actually have game music that's in the game or if they're just making a bullshit copyright claim, etc. I'm not really going to go into that. And uh, I'm probably going to be doing more games, like Dying or Dash, which is one of, another one of my good favorite series, which I'll get really, really frustrated at really, really, really quickly. Um, but I'm going to start a little mini-series that's going to be talking about video games, kind of in general, and some problems that some people have with some video games. Uh, today's episode is going to be on characters, and uh, one of the games I recently got, which I really enjoy, is called Tales of Zestria. Now, a lot of people didn't like the game because they thought the characters' emotions felt like forced or they were fake, etc. It didn't feel like a Tales game to some people. And my thing is, is they're looking at it from the player's point of view instead of the character's point of view. The main character. And a lot of games have this, and a lot of people don't look at it at the character's point of view. You know, where are the where is the character coming from? Why are they acting this way? Why are their emotions this way? Why aren't they like ours? Well, A, they're in a fantasy universe, so laws and physics are different than ours. You have to remember that. Two, they might have had a completely different upbringing than you or me, you know. They might, you know, have never seen magical things, so they might not believe in them, and then when they see them happen, they could completely freak out. Or, you know, in the uh, Tales of Zestria game, Sorry, the main character, he has never had human interaction in his life. Ever since he was a baby, him and the other main character, Miklio, who is the Seraph, who is pretty much a spirit uh, who has powers. He's a spirit of water. But anyways, Sori has been raised in a village of Seraph, a Seraphim, um, so pretty much all spirits. So he sees them, and he's all good with them, and he acts normal to them. But his big thing is, he can't let anybody that's in need just, like, be left in need. He always wants to help them, and it's kind of touching... But it's also not what a normal human would do. A normal human, if somebody was really in need, would just be like, fuck it, I got my own shit to deal with. And Sori, on the other hand, is like, no, we gotta help him. We can't just leave him there. Like, when you get uh, one of the other characters for a, li a little bit of time, Alicia. First time you see her, she's on the ground, knocked out. And Sori's like, we gotta go help her, she's in need. And Mikleo's like, no, she's a human, she's one of them. And he's like, but I'm one of them, too, kind of thing. Um, because Miklio doesn't like humans. He doesn't trust them. Um, and that's, you know, blatantly spaced in the game. And so Sobri's interaction with humans is a little awkward and a little weird, because he's never interacted with humans, you know? it's That's the way he is, and he's, like, all innocent, and, like, you know, he wants to save everybody and help everybody. And that's not normally what us humans do. It's not the way we work. We always go for our own, you know, inner achievement of, well, if I do this, then I'll get rewarded with this. And so it's like, oh, no, I just want to help them. For no reason at all. Other than to help them, because I have, it's a thing. And Mikleo's like, no, they're bad. Because they stopped believing in us, and they're bad. And all they do is create war. They're horrible people. And greed. So, you know... <laughs> And, uh, one of the other characters, I can't remember her name right offhand, anyways, she's the fire spirit that you get, who is also the embodiment of, like, all of the shepherd's power. And the shepherd is, like, the savior person. Um, anyways, so Sora becomes the shepherd. And you get this chick. And she hasn't had human interaction in over 200 years. She's a seraph. So her interactions are very innocent, and she believes there's good in everybody, but, you know, she also knows there's bad, and that we're trying to fight the bad. But she also made a pact with herself where she can't tell anything that any of the previous shepherds did. Like, she can't really, like, tell you you have to do this. Because the shepherd is supposed to learn their own truths and find, you know, answers, 
practically on their own, so that way they feel that they are doing the right thing, not just because they're told to do it. Which is kind of cool. And then you get Edna, who is maybe four foot tall, she's the seraph of Earth, and she's freaking hilarious, because she's the most mature out of all the group. She's really mature, but she's really, really old. Like, she doesn't look it, she looks like a little girl. And she's awesome, and like, there's the whole thing where they call her Lady Edna. And it's hilarious, because she's the most mature out of the whole group. But, and then there's like a character like Rose, who has, who doesn't believe in the Seraph, originally. And who doesn't like even, like, she hates ghosts. So, like, when she does get to see the Seraph finally, by becoming Sorry Squire, she like, flips shit. Because she's like, oh my god, and passes out. Because she can see them now. And, you know, yeah, we would do. We would flip the fuck out. So, you know, you have to look at the way a character has been raised or, you know, what's influenced that character. And that will explain, you know, why they act the way they do. Don't just look at a character and say, all their emotions are fake because they don't seem real to me because they're not how I would react. Well, of course not. They're not you. And you are not them. You need to take a step back and look at it through that character's point of view. Okay, well, this is how they were raised. You know, these are people that had influences, so this makes them act like this. This makes their their emotions go like this, you know? And Miklio and Sori are best friends, kind of like brothers, and they also have a slight rivalry to see who can find this in the ruin, her, you know, who can open the ruin the quickest, who can get through it the quickest, and so forth and so on. But, you know, you know you have that friend that keeps you out of trouble, but you also, like, if you get in some deep shit, you don't want them getting involved. And that happens in the game. And people, I guess, were like, oh, no, it oh, doesn't feel right. Well, it does if you look at it from the character's point of view. And that's something that everybody needs to realize is that, you know, video game characters aren't us. They may look more human or act human, but their world... Is completely different from ours you know their laws their physics you know their religion everything is different in that world so you need to take a step back and instead of saying well that's not how I would have acted you need to step, take a step back and say okay this is how the character is so this is their personality this is how they were raised this is who influenced them you know even maybe a religion in the game influenced them <laughs> And so they feel the need, they, they just automatically act this way, and if, you know, they're going towards a specific goal, maybe it's because they feel the need they have to work towards this goal. You know, like, I'm playing another game, Avion 4, right now. And you play Boyle, who is a retired villain. And he fully believes that he, you know, would have taken over the world. And, like, the very last quest on my, like, tab is called Boyle's Revenge, and it's where Boyle evidently rules the world. But you go through and you do heroic acts, and every time you do, Boyle's like, no, I'm not a hero, I'm not a hero, I'm a, I'm a retired villain. And he, you know, always makes sure that you know that he was a villain in this. He hates paladins, he's scared to death of paladins, because paladins kick the crap out of them. You know? And so, it makes sense, you know, every time you go and do stuff, like, when you start doing, like, side quests, he's like, no, that's too... Only heroes do side quests, and they're like, but you get rewards for doing this. And he's like, oh, so it's something I would have done normally, like killing these enemies, and then I get a reward for it if I turn it in? Okay, I'll go for the reward, because he's not just doing it to do it, he's doing it for the reward, because he used to be a villain, okay? You know, a hero would just do it to do it. But Boyle is like, no. And the whole reason that he is saving the world, quote-unquote, it is literally because his dog, well, his wolf Fang, was, like, stolen by the Mist Queen because her son was stolen. So, Boyle literally has to do this to get his dog Fang back and to save his village from, like, being, you know, like, engulfed in mist. And he was like, okay, I'll go save your son, but you gotta give me back my dog. And she's like, well, your dog ran off further than the mist is. And he was like, oh, God damn it. So, you know, you had to go and find Fang and go through a bunch of quests just to get Fang back. And then she's like, well, I'm still not going to, you know, have the mist be completely receded until you rescue my son. And it's like, oh, okay, well, we'll go do that, you know. But Will's not doing it because he's a hero. He's doing it because, goddammit, 
if Mr. Shroud's his house, he's fucking screwed. Okay, he's gonna die. So he's literally just doing it so he doesn't die. He's not doing it because, oh, it's the righteous thing to do. No, he's doing it so he doesn't die. And maybe, maybe he'll have a chance to rule the world again, you know? And as the game goes on, you know, he kind of feels good for being a hero sometimes. He's like, yeah, I pat myself on the back. And then he's like, no, no. Because it's his personality, like, having conflicts with itself. Because he's so, he was used to being the villain and being the retired villain even. And, you know, he's a villain. And now he's slowly turning into a hero. And it's taking time. Like, he isn't a full hero yet. He probably will be by the end of the game, but he's not. Because he still kind of rejects that idea. He's like, no, I'm not. And the actual villain is going to be, I guess, Hercules. And Hercules has been, you know, brainwashed, practically, by a demon. And so, and Boyle's like, no, you can't let the demon in. That's bad. You know, what are you doing? You should be fighting the demon. You're Hercules. And Hercules is like, no, it's the voice of a god. And Boyle's like, you're an idiot, kind of thing. You know? But it's, it's you know, it's that retrospect of, yeah, it makes sense for Boyle, because Boyle used to be a villain. You know, you have to take it from a character's perspective. You can't just say, oh, well, these are fake emotions, or this isn't how this should be acted out. Because you're not that character. You didn't come up in their upbringing. You don't know how you would act in that situation because you weren't brought up as they were. You were brought up differently, so you would act differently, you know? So, you have to take a step back and say, okay, let's look back at how the character was raised, how the personality is, and see if it makes sense why they're acting, why they're acting that way. And if it doesn't, then, you know, begin to question, why they're acting that way, and maybe later on in the game it'll be, you know, told why they did this or that. You know, cause some characters' backstories aren't completely unrevealed, you know, right at the start. It takes a while. So, you know, take a step back, you know. Don't just automatically assume the game's characters are bad just because they feel like emotions or, you know, how they act feels, you know, fake to you, because you wouldn't act that way. But they've been brought up different, they they have different personalities than you, they're not, you, everybody has a different personality. Hell, if everybody acted the same, it'd be a pretty goddamn boring world. Alright, so that's all I have for today. Um, I think the next mini series is going to be probably battles. And how different battle systems piss off people when they completely change in every game in the series, or they're good for some of the games, and then they change them for others. So, I think I'll do that in the next video, um, that'll probably be next week. Probably Monday is when I'm going to try and have it done. I'm going to try and put these videos up every Monday. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this series going. Um, it just depends on until I run out of topics or if I start to run out of topics, you guys can give me some more. But right now, I'm going to do char I did characters today. Next week is battles, and we'll go from there. Alright, guys. So I will see you next time.